Coming up on Ag Week TV, we'll look at the changing role of the Port of Duluth Superior as an ag export outlet. We'll find out why oat production is making a comeback here in South Dakota. The pandemic and election year debates headline Farm Fest Virtual 2020. And we celebrate Ag Week's 35th anniversary with four Ag Week pioneers. Welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Michelle Rook. Debate continued in Washington this week on a second COVID aid package with deep divide. At the same time, producers and lawmakers have been frustrated with how USDA allocated dollars in the first program. Only $6.8 billion, or 43% of the CFAP payments, have been paid out due to payment caps and design flaws. And sign-up has slowed as the deadline approaches at month end. So there's a call for USDA to be more equitable with this next round of assistance. We've seen recently the USDA has to uh, decline to exercise their authority to provide assistance to growers of certain classes of wheat, livestock producers who have been impacted, there's more we should do there, and also making sure we give explicit direction to the USDA on the biofuels front. She says more dollars need to go to agriculture to protect national food security. The pandemic canceled most farm shows this summer, including Farm Fest in Redwood County, Minnesota. However, educational forums were held online in their place this week. With more on Farm Fest Virtual 2020, here's Ag Week's Noah Fish. All the Farm Fest forums were online only this year. They included topics such as farm safety, House and Senate debates, and the current state of the ag economy. Livestock production, particularly uh, pork producers, you know, are really in crisis due to the COVID um, issue with the packers. Packers are still not at 100%. You know, we have to develop contingency plans. We frankly, without the emergency facilitation payments and now the CPAP payments, uh, you bankers would be in a lot of trouble in terms of uh, foreclosures and people not being able to pay their loans. For much more of our coverage of Farm Fest Virtual 2020, go to agweek.com. In Rochester, Minnesota, this is Noah Fish for Ag Week. The first issue of Ag Week magazine ran 35 years ago this week. It included a cover about the Port of Duluth Superior, which was a major export conduit for grains grown in the northern Great Plains at the time. Today, grain is still a big deal at the port, although markets are much different. Michael Pates has more in our Ag Week cover story. Shipping records have been kept in Duluth for nearly 150 years. When Ag Week debuted in 1985, the port shipped 3 million short tons of ag products. About 65% of that was for export. The mix was wheat, corn, millet, barley, beans, and sunflowers. Agriculture has changed a lot since then. You know, the, uh, the markets have changed, the major wheat producers have changed. In 2019, the port loaded 1.5 million short tons of ag products, of which 73% was for export. Today, it's primarily wheat and durum, but also canola and sugar beet pellets. About 70% of the Durham over the last two years has been shipped out through the ports in Duluth. Ag shipments using the port peaked in the 1970s, averaging over 6 million short tons per year. They've declined in each decade since. The port facilities are increasingly important for intermodal shipments and non-water transfers, but the waterway to the world is still vitally important, especially for wheat. If it wasn't for being able to ship out of Duluth, prices would be a lot higher going out of one of the other ports. 35 million short tons of all types of cargo move through the port every year. In 2019, grain only accounted for 4.4% of that tonnage total. But trends can change. This shipping season, grain tonnage through the port through June 30th was 20% above the five-year average for the period. For Ag Week, this is Michael Pates. Read more on this week's cover story in Ag Week magazine or at agweek.com. After diminishing in recent years, flooding from the rising water in Devils Lake, North Dakota is again creating problems for farmers in the area. Many farmers in the Devils Lake Basin have gotten double-digit rainfall amounts over the past month. That's pushed the lake higher. As it rises, water in surrounding fields miles away is often unable to drain as it normally would. Those things mean farmers are dealing with lots of standing water, which also means significant amounts of yield loss in places. The water was going down, uh, but when you keep getting rains of two to five, six, seven inches, areas west of town, upwards of 10 to 12, uh, there's nothing you can do. I mean, it just, it just 
takes this course and, and things come up and, and floods out crops and of course hurts communities. Devil's Lake flooding has been a serious issue for nearly 30 years. This year's oat harvest is almost half done nationally and nearly two thirds complete in South Dakota. The state has a bigger crop to harvest than in the past and is ready to reclaim its spot as the top oats producer in the country. I found out why production has been growing the last five plus years. South Dakota farmers planted 345,000 acres of oats in 2020, a jump of almost 100,000 acres since 2014. SDSU's oat breeder Melanie Cafe says interest is growing agronomically. Farmers uh, like oat because of the advantage in the crop rotation uh, with the corn and soybean to for the soil. Jesse Hall likes the marketing options Oats provides from cover crops to the certified seed he can get a premium selling. One, you, you know, you can sell it for seed. Uh, the other one is that you can, you know, raise it for forage. You know, it, it, it's an awful good forage crop. It turns out pretty good. It's got pretty good feed value to it. Or uh, you can also sell it to the millers. In fact, milling demand is steadily rising. The last five years, we have a bigger emphasis on making sure the variety we release uh, will fit the milling market. One of the reasons oats production has increased in interest among farmers is because of its profitability, especially compared to corn. When you look at the commodity prices right now, you know, uh, there's not as big of a gap between the price of oats and the price of corn. Oats is a low input crop, so not a lot of cost, uh, input cost, but yet um, then they're able to either harvest for grain and straw and make still a good revenue or um, they also use it a lot for hay. And with oat yields now topping 150 bushels per acre, that also improves profits in an otherwise tough commodity market. South Dakota's oat crop yields are running average to slightly above this year. Straight ahead, we celebrate our 35th anniversary, visiting with four pioneers who helped launch Ag Week in 1985. This is Dennis Beliski reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Let's face it, dogs will be dogs and do dog things, dig things and bury things, shred things, tear things, bark at things. And above all, dogs are going to eat dog things. At least you can support digestive health at mealtime. Exclusive Signature with Comfort Care is a unique combination of researched ingredients to support digestive health today while preparing your pets for what comes tomorrow. Advanced Grain Handling is your regional dealer for grain handler dryers, bins, and accessories. With Grain Handler's continuous mixed flow drying systems, you're capable of high levels of grain dryer efficiency on all types of grain, including seed grain. Advanced Grain Handling also carries West Steel's quality stainless steel products for on-farm and commercial grain storage solutions. Advanced Grain Handling has licensed and trained service techs and a licensed electrical shop. Get a hold of Chad Kylo to find the perfect solution for your farm. With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less burning and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. This week, Ag Week magazine is celebrating its 35th anniversary, so we thought it would be fun to bring back some of the pioneers who helped Ag Week get its start in 1985. Jenny Schleck did the honors. 
looking back at 35 years of Ag Week, uh, the first thing I want to know is, how did this all start? Mid-80s was creative time in newspapers and encouraged folks to be creative. So I think many of the newspaper publishers and editors were looking at, you know, something that would work in their their markets. And in the re- our area, it, the, the obvious candidate was agriculture. The opening seemed to be for a publication that dealt with the harder part, uh, harder edge of agriculture, markets, policy, international uh, relations. And that was the core, I think, of Ag Week. Mike's genius here was that Ag Week very early adopted a hyper-local uh, elevator chart. It became a really critical, must-see piece of information uh, for people who were raising crops and people who were marketing crops. And we still hear that from our audience today that I started reading Ag Week because I needed that elevator chart. <laughs> right. Back then, that was really cutting edge to know that. The critical thing here was that a livestock barn in Dickinson agreed <laughs> to buy the back page <laughs> of, of the Western edition of Ag Week. And so suddenly, uh, the second edition was viable with a, with a quite a different focus. Adding the livestock really made it a much more attractive regional publication than, than we had initially imagined. If you guys had any advice for uh, those of us who are now kind of looking toward what's the next 35 years look like? What do we, where do we take Ag Week from here? What would you suggest that we do? My advice would be listen to the audience like you always have. It, it's, it's just an amazing and wonderful thing. It helps you be a flexible business and you'll learn a ton. We're fueled by the readers. I would hope the readers still fuel what you guys do and feel like they can reach out and you'll be there for them. To hear Jenny's entire 35th anniversary interview with those four Ag Week pioneers, go to agweek.com. The world's largest brewer is pledging more than a half million dollars for ag research. The Anheuser-Busch Foundation has given $530,000 to support model farms at four land-grant universities in the company's primary barley and rice growing areas. It's part of Anheuser-Busch's 2025 sustainability goals. NDSU and Fargo is getting $150,000 for a partnership between the North Dakota Barley Council and the Shear Farm, which researches soil health. And the primary focus here is going to be on testing research questions around soil health and production sustainability, specifically um, looking at including barley in different rotations, uh, the benefits that has, and then the ability of cover crops to be grown uh, after barley. The project is taking place during the current crop season and the next two years. The other schools are Montana State, Idaho, and Arkansas. Still ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll tell you about a product that could help put unproductive ground back into use. Be ready for the challenging field conditions you face with the Summers VRT Renegade. With on-the-fly adjustment, including blade angle from 0 to 19 degrees, the VRT Renegade gives you unprecedented flexibility for the field results you want, spring or fall. Go to summersmfg.com or visit your local dealer to learn more about the VRT Renegade and North America's broadest line of tillage equipment from North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has a storage solution for you with a wide variety of bin options and accessories, along with site planning and superior customer service. Plus, from top to bottom, we offer the industry's best bins and warranties to protect your products and your grain storage investment. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with generations of experience and dependability. Make the superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. Add more bushels to your hopper and money to your pocket by harnessing the power of air with Crary Wind Systems. Whether your beans are chest high or barely off the ground, Crary offers two solutions that add a constant stream of high velocity air to quickly feed crop back to the auger, eliminating bunching, reducing shatter loss, and increasing your ground speed. Don't let crop conditions dictate your yield. Check out the Crary Air Reel or Crary Wind System today. Keep your equipment in the field when you need it most with parts from Titan Machinery. 
we carry a full line of high-quality Case IH parts designed for optimal performance and durability. We also carry alternative parts options at lower price points with rugged designs for a great mix of affordability and performance to fit a wide variety of makes and models. Contact your local Titan Machinery location today or shop online at www.titanmachinery.com. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH parts leader. Change is constant in the ag industry. Stay ahead of the change with the latest ag news and insights from experienced ag journalists with an Ag Week membership. Get unlimited access to ag markets, tech trends, policy news and products, along with farm life insights, profiles, and more with light access. Upgrade to all access and get unlimited access to all of our FCC news sites, along with your award-winning ag news. Become a member today at agweek.com slash subscribe for the ag news you need. We're in a critical growing stage for corn and soybeans. While we get some help from the forecast, here's our AgriWeather Outlook. As we head into the uh, mid-August portions here, again, August is showing up in true fashion, kind of a roller coaster ride as far as temperatures are concerned. And as we go throughout August 9th through the 15th, here we'll have plenty of uh, warm temperatures out across the Plain States, uh, the Deep South, over towards the Great Lakes region, and we'll start to cool things off across the western coast, across the uh, Pacific Northwest for this upcoming week. What we're looking at for mainly the Dakotas, upper Minnesota here, mainly temperatures into the 80s. We may see a day or two where we do see those highs are creeping up to right around that 90 degree mark once again. But the better chance for those 90s will stay out across parts of the Great Lakes region, uh, parts of the upper Midwest here where those upper 80s, lower 90s look to kind of stick around. And that humidity will be up as well. At times we'll have dew points creeping up into those mid to upper 60s uh, to right around the lower 70s. And again, that cooler weather will stay well off to our west. And you'll see this kind of taking shape here on the temperature trend map here as we go throughout this upcoming week. Again, we warm things up across a good chunk of the Plain States. In fact, a good chunk of the uh, lower 48 here uh, through this upcoming weekend. Again, that cooler weather staying off to our north and west and then we'll get a brief a cool down just briefly for about a day or so across the Dakotas, uh, upper Minnesota here around that Tuesday to Wednesday time frame before we start to increase those temperatures once again as another ridge begins to build right back in again and you can see that uh, kind of shaping up there on the temperature map with those red uh, forming up across the northern tier of the Rockies. Precipitation overall for this week, uh, just, you know, those garden variety scattered showers and thunderstorms can be expected uh, once again, although I do think we'll have lesser rain chances uh, once again for this upcoming week with only a day or so that will actually include some rain chances here through August 9th, right on through the 15th. And of course, we'll be watching those tropics as well as again, we will be watching them closely throughout the rest of August going forward into September. Take Taking a look at the drought monitor here again, we are still dealing with some drier conditions out across the parts of northeastern Minnesota here, the Duluth, the Two Harbors area up north and also across parts of western and central North Dakota, still dealing with some drier uh, soil moisture out there. And then across the four corners down here, still dealing with that extreme drought conditions uh, taking shape. But the good news is parts of the east coast, the northeastern coast, thanks to our recent uh, hurricane that did come through uh, last week, we are finally starting to improve some of those drought conditions across parts of the eastern seaboard. And going forward into the uh, almost the last week in August here, August 16th through the 22nd, overall again, we'll still have that precipitation chances still increasing across parts of the Dakota's upper Midwest here with again, those scattered showers and thunderstorms returning. And of course, again, and not all of us will experience uh, that moisture for this upcoming week. What I'm tracking here uh, over the next week, again, 80s to near 90 across the Northern Plains, widely scattered rain continues through the rest of August. Steffes Group, selling land and the equipment to farm it since 1960. If you're interested in selling or have questions about our auction process, head to our website at steffesgroup.com to contact us at any one of our four locations located throughout the Midwest. You can also visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel to view all of our auction previews and recaps to stay up to date on the market in your area. North Star Ag is proud to add some exciting new products to their lineup this summer, including Meyer Manufacturing Forage Boxes, Meyer's Equipment Manure Spreaders, H&S Beet Carts, and Summers Manufacturing Land Rollers and Tillage. This August, North Star Ag will be moving to a convenient new location just off I-94 in Tower City, North Dakota. 
We look forward to seeing you there. Luckin Trucks and Parts sells quality used parts for all makes and models. With over 50 acres of trucks and parts and new inventory arriving daily. Family owned and operated since 1966, Luckins specializes in the sale of quality used medium to heavy duty truck parts as well as pre-owned trucks, trailers, and construction equipment. If it's on a truck, we got it. Call us today and let us get you your part. 2020 has started off where 2019 left off with a lot of uncertainty and concern. Is your farming operation ready to take the volatility this year has to offer? Do you have a marketing plan in place to take advantage of opportunity? Are you finding it hard to separate the noise from the news? Talk to the professionals at Martinson Ag. We can help you make sound risk management decisions that will help your operation survive during these unusual times. We're going to talk today about a revolutionary auto steer product that you guys have developed. We back one of these things in, it'll drain a 40 acre patch just within hours. And what can you tell us about what dairy farmers do to make sure that their animals are happy? Their care is our primary concern. Is there still time for producers to get storage bins up? Absolutely. We still can definitely get something up and ready for corn harvest. Saline can leave parts of a field unproductive, but now there's a solution. An Arizona-based company is taking technology developed for golf courses and using it to take salts out of the soil. Here's more on how calcine improves the soil. Calcium is kind of the bully of the soil, and so it pushes off the other nutrients off of the soil colloids. That leaves the land unproductive and costs growers money. Land can become too saline from dry conditions, irrigation, or a number of other factors. But a product called calcine can help solve that. Calcine works to allow the calciums and the soil properties to delineate the salts out of the soil. To start to recover soils and to work with the soils to remove salts from the upper layers. Tom Vanderheiden is a certified crop advisor with 40 years of experience. He was working with forage producers to increase the value of their alfalfa. One of the problems was the salts being taken up by the forages. They needed to find a way to reduce that to make it more digestible. A few years ago, he learned about calcine. It's sprayed on land that has been left unproductive by high salt levels. Well, we've taken areas where that haven't produced a crop in almost 20 years and starting to actually get crops to grow back in those areas. We've got a number of areas where in the last three years, since 2017, to where we've taken fields from no production to basically full production today. ST Biologicals is based in Bloomington, Minnesota and sells a number of soil improvement products. Calcine was developed about 30 years ago as a way to get salt out of wells at golf courses in Arizona. In 2014, it was starting to be used in the ag industry in Arizona to remove salt from farm fields that were being irrigated. Three years later, it was brought to the Dakotas and Northwest Minnesota for the same purpose. Calcine can be used for all unproductive soils, whether sodic or saline. It'll work in both areas, we just have to change some processes that we work with from there. So we use more beet lime in this market on the sodic soils than we do on the saline soils. Vanderheiden says the costs vary, but he says growers can start to see a return on investment in their first crop year, not to mention a significant increase in the value of restoring unproductive land. Now all of a sudden that value of that land is, is increased back up to almost a couple thousand dollars or more an acre. Gary Wagner farms in northwest Minnesota. His soil varies from heavy clay to sandy soil, and he's noticed the salts have gotten worse over the past 10 years. Our experience is normally along roadsides, whether it be highways, putting salt on highways and, and that getting up in the fields, or satellite imagery, we looked at it, you can see exactly where the calcine was. We have more growth in those areas. Wagner says so far he's impressed with calcine's effectiveness. This is our second year now into it, and we're, we're becoming a believer. Near Crookston, Minnesota, this is Rose Dunn for Ag Week. For more information on calcine, contact Jim Erickson at ECO at the phone number or email on your screen. Do you know the story of the former Minnesota ghost town turned historical site? You will if you stay with us after the break. Thank you to our Ag Week Cereal Crop Tour sponsors, Hefty Seed Company of Wilton in Hertzfield, North Dakota, Calcine, and Steffes Group. The Ag Week team gave you an inside look at cereal crop conditions across the region. 
watch the continued coverage on eggweek.com. The Egg Week Corn and Soybean Crop Tour debuts later this month. For sponsorship opportunities, email ads at eggweek.com or call 888-239-4089. When it comes to grain storage and handling solutions, one call does it all. Gateway Building Systems, the number one Brock bin dealer in the U.S. is locally owned and provides turnkey convenience with factory direct product, complete design services, and in-house construction. Now is the perfect time to take advantage of discounts on Brock solid bins, grain dryers, and aeration systems. For more information, go online to gatewaybuilding.com or call 1-800-747-4499. Egg Week brings you timely agriculture news from field to fork in digital, print, and television. Fresh every week, join Jenny Schlecht from the Egg Week editorial team and me, Al Windmill, from the sales and marketing team for a deeper dive into farm and ranch stories along with guest interviews with personalities from the world of agriculture. If you're involved in farming, ranching, or agribusiness, the Egg Week podcast is the show for you. For Egg Week, this is Mikkel Pates at Watertown, South Dakota. We'll look at the positive impacts a dairy can have on the community. A Minnesota couple has put a grain bin to a new use. Spoiler alert, it's not grain. This elaborate system of tubing with the downhill slope is how Maplewood State Park gathers sap to make syrup. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. One of the earliest towns in southeast Minnesota is undergoing a huge restoration project. The old downtown of Forestville is listed on the National Register of Historic Places and is operated by the Minnesota Historical Society as a museum. Forestville was founded in 1853 and was booming until it was bypassed by the railroad in 1868. General store owner Thomas Meehan turned the area into an industrial farming district to keep it alive, but it became a ghost town after he left in 1910. Remaining buildings are now undergoing restoration, but are still eerily similar to how they were 100 years ago, including the general store. When Meehan closed it down in 1910, he left all the stock inside. So we have a lot of the surviving, you know, patent medicines and original clothing and stuff like that. Anyone with a state park permit is allowed to visit Forestville State Park to see the footprint of the town. The restoration project should be completed this fall. Thanks for watching and celebrating Ag Week's 35th anniversary with us. Remember, go to agweek.com for all your ag news. Have yourself a great and safe week.